Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day so far and thank you so much for being here and joining me for another art video. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing the watercolor painting process for this red eye tree frog that I created in response to Dina Tollefson's totally awesome challenge. I want to send out a huge shout out to Dina for creating these challenges for us because I not only feel that challenges are a huge part in pushing ourselves artistically and growing and progressing our artistic skills, but by creating these challenges, artists like Dina are really helping out the entire artistic community because we get a chance to get to know other artists out there, make new friends, and really feel like a part of a group, a part of a community, because this is essential in order to keep going with our work and keep sharing. Being an artist can be incredibly isolating, and even for me as a complete introvert, I really know that I need to hang out with like-minded people and that this is going to help me stay consistent, motivated, and inspired to keep working on my art. So thank you so much, Dina, for coming up with this challenge. I had lots of fun with it. And also thank you very much for all of the information that you so generously share over at your channel. A link to her channel will be left down below in the description box so that you can go and check it out. All right, you guys, so I'm going to talk a little bit about this painting process before leaving you with the rest of this time lapse and some nice music. Before I get into it, I just want to send out a huge welcome to all you new people just visiting my channel today for the very first time. I am super happy you're here and do consider subscribing because every single Friday I share a new video with art tips, drawing and painting tutorials, and encouragement for aspiring artists. All right, so right here you can see me finishing up my outline preliminary sketch before starting with the painting process. Usually when I have time, I really like doing these freehand and really exercising my observational and drawing skills. For my preliminary sketch, I often use an HB pencil and I draw as lightly as possible so that I don't damage my paper and also so that my pencil lines don't show through my paint later on because as you know, watercolor is transparent and I don't want my pencil lines to show through the paint. After having completed my preliminary sketch, you can see me right here starting to prepare my colors. And this is pretty much the same process that I walk you through and go much more into depth on in a past video that I created in which I painted a giraffe. I'm going to make sure to leave a link to that video down below in the description box in case you're interested in a more in-depth explanation on my process. But pretty much what I am doing is I am really taking a moment to observe my reference picture and preparing a limited color palette based on the colors that I'm able to perceive in it. For this specific watercolor painting, I used a total of eight different colors. I used lemon yellow, cadmium yellow medium, yellow ochre, cadmium red light, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, green, and burnt umber. All of these colors are included in my 12 color St. Petersburg White Nights watercolor paint set. I ordered this set through Amazon a couple of weeks ago and it was somewhere around $26 and I'm very very happy with the quality of these paints. They are very vibrant, they mix together very easily, they are creamy, and I really really like the fact that in this set the pans are much larger than my Winsor & Newton sets. The paper that I'm using is also very affordable for a decent quality. This one is by Strathmore and it's their 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper from their 300 series. As you can see, it usually buckles and warps a bit when you're using a lot of wet on wet techniques. I don't really allow this to stress me out very much though because almost always by the next day, once the painting is dried, it has completely flattened out by itself. Links to these watercolor painting supplies and the Royal and Langnickel Zenline brushes that you always see me use in my videos are going to be left down below for you in the description box in case you're interested in checking them out for yourself. And I am so very thankful to everyone that has used my links in the past to buy anything off from Amazon because with every purchase that you make using my links, I get a tiny commission at no extra cost to you and I collect these small earnings to buy more art supplies and keep creating these videos for you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I am super grateful. 
So I've often received the question of what we should be painting first, the background or the main subject. And I can say at least for myself, it really varies from painting to painting. When I am painting landscapes with watercolor, for example, I like doing my best to work from background to foreground. Of course, this is just generally speaking, like a general guideline for myself, because I know that uh, oftentimes I wait for a layer to dry completely before going back in and adding further details or darkening values. And that means that I always get to a point at which I jump back and forth between the different layers. However, I find it really helpful to think in that way, at least when I am laying down my initial layers of color, because we have to remember that watercolors are translucent. And this means that the way that we decide to layer different colors is going to affect what they look like at the end. I also do other kinds of paintings that I have shared here on this YouTube channel in which I'm mainly just focusing on one single subject with little to no background and in many of those cases I leave the background until the end because I know that I'm just going to do something very simple and sometimes I'm just focusing on creating kind of a spot illustration instead of a complete painting because my plan is to go into Photoshop and remove the background to design merch and patterns with that specific illustration like the products that I sell over on Redbubble and Society6. If you're interested in learning about how I scan and edit my illustrations to then create designs that I upload onto Redbubble and Society6, then check out the video I'm going to be leaving down below for you in the description box that I shared a few months ago. And finally, when it comes to this kind of painting, like the one you're seeing me work on right now, I decide whether I'm going to be painting my background or my main subject or the things in the foreground first, depending on what kind of effects I want to add into these different layers. So I don't think there are any cold hard rules in terms of the order of the layers that you're painting, but you do need to make sure that you're making things easier for yourself by taking into account the characteristics of this medium. So this medium is transparent, which means that the layer of color in the bottom is going to affect the way that the color on the top looks. And another huge thing that we have to have in mind is that when we place pigment on wet or even slightly dampened paper, it's going to expand and blur out. So if you're looking to create sharp looking details, you need to make sure that you're laying down that paint on dry paper either an area of paper that is completely new and unused or a layer of paint that is already completely bone dry. So my suggestion would be to give thought to what areas you want to create blurred out effects in, what areas you want to be heavily textured, and what areas you want more detail in since the beginning before starting with the painting process. This way, you can have a much better idea of what areas you're going to tackle using wet on wet techniques, which areas you're going to tackle using primarily wet on dry techniques, and which areas are going to be perhaps developed through a series of layers. Now, remember when you're working with watercolor, it's very important to allow a previous layer to dry completely before going into that area and further adding detail or further deepening values. And I've really found that the more I work with watercolor, the better I get at understanding when I have to allow a certain area to dry completely before attempting to go back into it. Because, of course, you can continue adding more and more pigment and sort of a texture effect to a certain extent on a wet area, like what I did with the tree trunk or the tree branch right there in this painting. But there always comes a point at which you have to realize that you have to leave it alone and that there's not much you can do at that point except allow it to dry completely and perhaps jump onto another section that you can work on while that dries. Another key thing I always make sure to do in all of my watercolor paintings, it doesn't matter what it is I am painting, is I always make sure to pinpoint my highlights before starting with my painting process. I want to make sure that I keep those highlights, those lightest areas protected throughout my entire painting process. 
by keeping these highlights and creating a very wide range of values throughout my painting as well as going very very dark in some selected areas I really give dimension to the piece and add a lot of contrast and at the same time play with watercolors glowy and light characteristics. And finally something that I almost always do is I like working from very light and translucent and work my way towards darker and more saturated paint mixtures as I go. Alright you guys, I'm going to stop babbling now and leave you to enjoy the rest of this time lapse. Congratulations to all of the artists out there who participated in this challenge and I can't wait to see what you came up with.
right, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed this video, that you learned something new or got inspired to go and try something out for yourself. If you did enjoy this video, please, please, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps my channel get in front of more people. I am still collecting questions for my upcoming Q&A video that is meant to be celebratory because I reached my 4,000 subscriber mark here on YouTube. So if you have any questions for me at all on anything and everything art related, please make sure to leave them down below in the comment section so that I can make sure to include them in my video. I'm going to make sure to leave a couple of cool watercolor painting videos here for you to check out. Don't forget to subscribe so that I can see you next Friday and talk to you soon.